my name is Eva Molnar, and um, I have the honor to moderate this panel. This panel, uh, which uh, is going to deal with uh, transport, health, and environment, uh, with this title, keeping it clean. Um, as uh, uh, part of the introduction, we will not go too much into details because you can read the CVs in the brochure. However, let me introduce ourselves uh, a little bit. You can see the names um, here. Uh, my name is Eva, Eva Molnar, you call me Eva. Uh, I'm representing the UN. Uh, within the UN, uh, I am from an organization that is uh, actually sort of like uh, the ICAO for inland transport, because all the multilateral arrangements for inland transport, road, railways, inland water transport, is done in our organization. I would like also uh, to uh, tell you that in this panel, uh, we have uh, many different uh, professions represented. Uh, we have a lot of uh, university professors. We have transport specialists, uh, uh, land developers, uh, urban, trans urban uh, developers. But also we have a medical doctor with us. Uh, so Mr. Lawrence Burns from the Michigan University, uh, who is also a member of the uh, Sustainable Mobility of the Earth Institute Roundtable. Um, uh, next to him, uh, Mr. Hozaki uh, from West Nippon Expressway. Um, next to me, uh, Mr. Huang. Uh, and it's a special pleasure to me that uh, we are sitting side by side because a couple of weeks ago, when we were at the World Bank Transport Forum, uh, we were only connected through the internet, uh, not uh, uh, through a direct panel. Uh, next to me, Mr. Pan, who is a professor in Shanghai University, um, and who uh, will bring a lot of interesting uh, cases uh, um, uh, about uh, the Chinese solutions. Uh, Mrs. Hel Soholt from Denmark, um, uh, who is a founding partner uh, and managing director of the Gale Architects, and uh, our medical doctor, I can't even say colleague, but actually in this panel, uh, our colleague, Mr. Jean-Francois Toussaint, um, who is a director uh, at the Institute for Biomedical Research and Sports Epidemi Epidemiology in France, and he is, um, uh, um, he is a professor in cardiology. Uh, so, uh, with this uh, little introduction, let me first refer to the already started discussion in the morning, because this morning we had a side event that was organized by WHO Europe. And as you know that in Europe, uh, we have uh, uh, revolutionized uh, thinking about transport because there is already a process in place where transport, health, and environment issues are thought over together. Uh, this uh, process, uh, this project, is called the PEP, the uh, Transport, Health, and Environment Pan-European process, in which process uh, uh, there are lots of uh, uh, concrete results already. Concrete results not only about uh, information sharing and sharing of best practices, but also um, uh, very tangible results. For example, methodological framework, how to develop a national strategy, where all the uh, demands of the three sectors are taken into account. And a new tool, how to carry out the cost-benefit analysis, uh, uh, taking into account the health aspects of transportation, which I'm sure Jean-Francois will have a lot to say about. Uh, without further ado, I would like also to mention to you that we will have three major topics. Uh, one will deal with the megatrends and the conflicting demands for future mobility. Um, after each of these topics, we will have a, a room discussion. The second uh, topic will be about urban mobility and within that urban public transport, the future of urban public transport. And the final, uh, model splits, model splits between modes, between individual and public transport, uh, between motorized and non-motorized transport, and what challenges, what new approaches uh, we are facing uh, with regard to walking and cycling. Um, with this, I would like to first uh, give the floor um, to uh, Larry, um, to Professor Burns, uh, since in general we know that um, transport helps uh, make societies more prosperous and more prosperous societies are typically healthier. However, 
uh, they have also more motorized transport, uh, which might contradict as well. So please. Could we show the video? Yes. And please use the microphone. that was was a um, thank you <laughs> that was a visualization of the year 2030 in Shanghai um, the Shanghai World Expo ran from May through October of 2010 and there were over 70 million visitors at the expo at the time of the um, mobility pavilion I was an executive at General Motors responsible for research and development and my assignment was to help the world envision a better city and a better life in Shanghai based on what might be possible with the convergence of technology. ENV stands for electrically networked vehicles, and in essence, what we're talking about here is a complete new DNA for the automobile that offers a promise of transformational change. Uh, the primary thesis is vehicles that can communicate with each other can avoid each other in crashes. If we can take the crash out of the mobility system, we can make vehicles that are dramatically lighter and smaller, which make batteries and electric drive more realistic and practical, and you put it all together and you can have transformational change. And I do want to give credit to General Motors and Shanghai Automotive for allowing us to use the video. Thank you. <laughs>